Aloha, I'm Joshua Cooper, and welcome to Cooper Union, what's happening with human rights around our world on Think Tech Live, broadcasting from our downtown studio in Honolulu, Hawaii, and Moana Nui Akea. Today, we're looking at people in place together as a force for good. Article 24, Regenerative Rest and Leisure, Recognizing Design and Development for Maui's Future. Today, I'm very fortunate to be joined by two amazing advocates who really focus on regenerative tourism and know that tourism can be a force for positive change. Michelle, thank you so much for joining us today. Can you tell us what first inspired you to be involved in regenerative tourism and also why it is such an important issue for humanity today? Mm -hmm. Yes, and I want to offer just a, a little bit of, of um, caveat and acknowledgement that Bill and I are not in Hawaii and we're not native Hawaiians. We're not residents of Hawaii. I had maybe my most magical, certainly my most magical vacation in Hawaii years ago. So I, I feel some uh, real love, but uh, what we what we do bring is, or I'll, I'll speak for myself and, and uh, I, I, I know from working with Bill that he, he brings also uh, several decades of focus on regenerative principles, on living systems principles as they show up, as they are useful in human contexts like communities and businesses and um, projects. So it, it's from this long time of working with a, a, a different worldview that doesn't tell us that everything in the world operates like a machine. The, the dominant story, the dominant Western and, and non-Indigenous story uh, that guides so much of the world now tells us that we are separate from nature and separate from each other, that everything uh, exists to be extracted and controlled uh, and um, as we discover that there is more to the story, that that is not uh, a, a viable story by itself, then we discover different ways of being in every kind of work and every form of community. So that's been my focus for about 25 years in a range of sectors. And it is uh, in the last five to seven years that I've brought a focus also to tourism. So uh, it, I'm, I would say, just to, to, to finish that bit of introduction, um, I'm especially excited about the potential of the tourism sector, the hospitality and hosting sector to help the world embrace this uh, more indigenous, more life aligned worldview because the hospitality sector is already oriented to bringing people together in meaningful exchange, meaningful experience, to, to think differently, to recreate themselves and recreate the world. So uh, I, I think it's such an important um, sector, has such important opportunity to contribute um, to the regeneration, to the healing of people in place, as you say. And, and you have some real resources and leadership in Hawaii as well that I'm, I'm happy to say a bit more about what I see and, and what inspires me there. But maybe you would like to invite Bill to introduce himself too. Sure, Bill. Could you share with us a bit about what really initially inspired you and, and what do you see as being so, why it's so important? Well, what inspired me in general, kind of what Michelle said, is that what inspired me is working with life on its own terms not what we assume to be a way of manipulating or controlling life. And when you realize that, you realize you're really, we're, none of us are really in charge or in control. And so that kind of work with, that, with emerging understanding and working with whole living systems, which maybe we can get into a little bit to understand the practicality of that, is what has led to our practice in working with uh, real estate projects. You know, and how does, how does real estate actually form an acupuncture point for regeneration is that we're not really working on the project. We're working on the living system, the human and other than human, obviously, because it's air, it's the, the worms and the trees and the animals and the critters and the birds that actually give us the clean air, the fresh water to survive. So if we talk about sustainability, what are we what are we sustaining with sustainability? And I think once you think about it at its core level, we're sustaining life. So how do we work with life on its own terms? And as a result of that, uh, what led me to work in, in the tourism sector is a client coming, wanting to do an eco resort down in Mexico. Uh, David Leventhal with Playa Viva was our first in, in 2006. 
And that has been a transformative project for the region, for the area, for visitors. I've had visitors come up to me in the street and say, Bill, I was at this resort you worked on, and I'm investing money in the, with these with the people, and I'm supporting a high school student. And anyway, they got really excited about being engaged. So um, the inspiration happened by accident in terms of tourism. It just is a natural extension of the work that we do with life. I don't know, I'll stop there. Maybe that seems a little inscrutable, but I think it's a good place to stop. No, it's fully understandable, and it really does begin that conversation, what we're talking about is really regenerative systems. And the Universal Declaration of Human Rights does guarantee people around the world the right to rest and leisure as a necessity. It's looking at human activities because they can change into alignment with our natural systems. And humanity must commit to a systems change to be catalyst for social change, even in exercising that right to rest and leisure. So it is imperative to nurture associations, regenerating people in place. And that's why I really do think it's necessary to change nature of travel to be a force for good. And Michelle, maybe you can share with us a bit some of those positive examples that you see in certain champions in regenerative travel and tourism that you see is guiding the way. What are the main principles and what do you see as the possibility to change the current model? I love how you said it's really too exploitative right now and we're moving more towards a, a mutual exchange instead of multinational corporations extracting and, and taking away. It's more of a mutual exchange between people and place and learning from one another. I, I wanna start with the very first thing you said about the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that guarantees people around the world the right to rest and leisure. And, and already there, it, it's a shift from the mechanistic story that would tell us uh, we should just keep going like machines. We don't need rest and leisure. So it's a, a living system story that says this is part of the natural rhythm of uh, any any living system. And yet, when we have a systems view, then we see that it can't be at the expense of those living systems that w where we are taking our rest. We also have to have responsibility. So um, I'm seeing around the world a, a an explosion of interest in what is coming to be called regenerative tourism. Uh, we, Bill and I, in our report that we wrote recently for Destination Canada, the national um, tourism organization for Canada, we, we shifted it to regenerative approaches to tourism to make it clear that the work that's needed is, is not primarily with the tourists, but with the community. If regeneration is in some ways a synonym for healing, then what we're exploring, what we're looking for is a way for the act of hosting and hospitality to be a, a force for good, to be a force for healing, as you're saying. And so really that is the work of the hosting community to heal people and place. The tourist can't do that for us in our community. So it's it's very exciting that this conversation is starting to happen around the world. And I know it's happening in Hawaii. I, I saw that from a distance, saw that conversation arising over the last few years, and in particular during the pandemic and um, during a hopeful time, as many thought, this is our chance to pause and make choices on our own terms. To, to understand who are we and, and what do we want and what does this place need of us? And can we take ownership and agency over the invitation that we extend? And, and I, I think what came out of the pandemic wasn't that um, reset that many hoped for. And then the, the wildfires came and again, brought that question to the forefront. Do we get a choice? Can we choose to come together as a community and Make sure that when we invite people over <laughs> as guests, that we're not left in, in worse shape than when they came. And, and to discover what is, what is the real potential of this place? What does this place need of us? So I'm inspired by uh, the conversations that are happening in particular with native Hawaiian wisdom and, and cultural knowledge that's being brought to the forefront. There's a professor named Pauline Sheldon at the University of Hawaii School of Travel Industry and Management, who is 
um, telling the story and offering real leadership. And there's a, a network, a global network called Local 2030 of um, more than 100 island nations around the world that are focused on these questions of, of how do we, um, among other things, how do we reimagine tourism as a force for good and for healing? And, and that starts most of all with um, the conversation that we have as a community. So there are, are many places around the world, um, New Zealand in particular, where this conversation is, is really beautifully unfolding at the operator level. So how businesses, hotels, and, and um, tourism uh, services are reimagining themselves. And, and at the community level, at the regional tourism organization, the government level, all of them are coming together to, to reimagine. We see it in Belgium, in Northern Ireland, and, and here in Canada. Um, and I know, Bill, you have some other uh, inspiring examples in other parts of the world as well. So maybe that, that's enough to hand it over. Sure, go ahead, Bill. Yeah, I, I, maybe I wanna make this, I'll try to make this a little less, a little more, a little more, a little less abstract. Um, whatever, whatever well, everything Michelle is saying is true. And I'm wondering how that is being heard by the audience. And I don't know if I've got any better uh, way into the subject matter, but I will say that this is that ultimately the best tourism in my experience has been through relationship, through developing relationships with people in places I'm visiting. And as I travel with work and I do a lot of traveling with work, I find it is a lot more fun than traveling as a tourist. So I, why is that? And I realize it's because I'm engaged in something meaningful with the people of that place, something that's important to them, something that's important to me. And there's a deeper connection because of it. It's not superficial. And it's through relationships that we actually begin to heal. We don't can't force healing. It's being, being in friendship. And then, well, if we can make tourism and invite tourism to be focused on what's important to that community, the visitors are going to feel that too and learn from that and take that into their homes. Um, so in one way to think about this is that we're, and this is gonna sound, this is now back to abstract, is that we're working with whole systems, whole living systems. Joshua, I don't get to know you by looking at, liver, at your liver and kidneys. I look at you as a whole living entity. And the places that we visit are living organisms. And how do we see them? What's the essence, the core nature of that place? And that's really at a subliminal level what we're exploring when we're when we're touring. So when we actually are getting to know a place, and here's the abstract part, is that every whole system has to add value to the next whole system. This is living systems theory, that you need to add value to the next system. So Joshua, you with your family, I'm, the, the lowest the, the lowest hole in your body is a bacteria. You need to be adding value to that. It's adding value to you and you to your family your family to the neighborhood, neighborhood to the watershed. And these holes are identifiable. And if we're not adding value to them, then we don't have a sustainable condition. So, so regenerative tourism is about helping, inviting people to see those relationships. And I know it's, it sounds abstract, but it's actually relationship building. It, the begin, it helps us understand what's going on. And understanding is the beginning of love. And that's what we come away with when we're when we're if we're really having a powerful experience. All right, I'll stop because I think I'm probably digging a hole. At the, I should stop digging. I was actually saying I love that we're digging deep in this dialogue. So that's exactly where I was headed. We're getting digging so that we can actually plant those seeds. And and it reminds me of of experience I share as well. I mean, I remember the first time I went to Tahiti. We went there to actually protest the nuclear testing of uh, France there and. Mm. I made a commitment after that experience, like I will never really go somewhere unless it's really being invited by community to assist and in that genuine partnership. And I'm lucky now I've been to over a hundred countries and they've all been along those same lines, Bill, of people saying, this is happening. Can you come and assist or in reaching out? And then you don't really stay at the places where they're the tourism governments tell you to stay, but you're really with the families, you're in the community and you just have a much richer experience. You understand exactly. the place, you're 
you really connect in every level and it's and it's been the the most richest life and redefining what rich really means so mm-hmm. i really do appreciate both of the points that you're saying and michelle when you're talking about local 2030 and some of the professors we were just at the hawaii green growth local 2030 annual summit mm-hmm. and it's a great engagement experience because it's hawaii tourism authority is there mm-hmm. uh, travel to change is there and it is everyone who is part of it, who understands it as you are a guest in our home. Mm-hmm. Come here, you have a certain kuleana, a responsibility, mm-hmm. in a way a joy though, it, to be able to participate and be part of. And being part of this ohana of our family means that you, you're not just here just to take, but to also give back. And I loved when Bill was sharing his story about oh, I'm now sending someone to this program and that program. Tourism can be that space where people come and visit, get to know people, see what people are doing, want to contribute to that, want to then assist with the tiny home, want to then assist to make bike paths that then when they return next time, they can ride in, read books underneath trees that are shade that they planted before, and Mm. really see their time here as one of a partnership. That's really the beginning of that. So maybe Michelle, you could expand on that a bit of, as we're looking at the, what you were sharing with Canada and what you both were describing there, what mm-hmm. we see as the direction that we're headed in ways mm-hmm. that we can do this all better. Perfect. It, this, this brings to mind a really nice example from another part of the world, from Flanders, uh, a region in Belgium. A few years ago, they were preparing for the 100 year anniversary of World War One. And the regional tourism organization was doing all the right things according to um, tourism education and best practices to prepare making sure that there were enough hotels and signage and kind of flow of the many 1000s of people that they were expecting. They created a brand and, and logo for the commemoration and kind of communication plans. And then at one point, a a citizen uh, wrote a letter to the editor of a regional newspaper saying, this is terrible. This is awful. They're treating it as if this is a trip to Disney. And this was a tragic, terrible event. And it's somehow sacred as a result. And, And it's just all wrong. And to their credit, this regional tourism organization stopped everything really paid attention, gathered the community together to say, do we want to do this? And, and if so, on what terms? What, what would make it okay with us? And they went through a process to identify seven principles that had to be true, had to be honored if this were to be truly respectful. Re- respect was the first one. And, and part of that involved respect for, for the facts of history. That and recognizing that everyone in the community is a host, that everyone could see themselves as host. You're you're on the bus, you're walking on the street, and someone asks you, "What happened here? Do you know?" And there was such a care in the community, even people who are not directly involved in tourism but saw themselves as hosts. So much care that when the tourism organization, in response to this community conversation, offered history lessons to the community, hundreds of people took part so that they could be faithful and respectful hosts. And they, they, they generated ideas for ways to welcome people in a, in a really meaningful way, uh, ideas that the tourist organization really couldn't have on their own. And, and, and there are many examples. So I, I find that a beautiful example of the community finding its voice together and deepening their care, deepening their connection. So it was a force for healing, this idea of of hosting each other, being hosted by this land, and and on that basis, choosing together what is the invitation for hosting others. This is one example. Right. Can I just build on that? Absolutely. Uh, Go ahead. How much? I said, go ahead. Oh, okay. We have one minute. Um, the uh, 
regeneration, I just want to, what Michelle's pointing out, is regeneration is a rebirth of caring. But on a, but on a continual basis, and the important thing about regeneration, it doesn't happen once. It is, it is meant to be a continual birth, life, death, rebirth, birth, life, death, rebirth. We all go through, any living system goes through senescence, death, and rebirth. We do it in our marriages. Let's just use that as an example. I have an argument with my spouse. I have to regenerate that relationship or it's not going to be very fun. So um, we do that in our, with ourselves as we grow. And how, how do we do that with our community? We have to be conscious. And actually having visitors observe us is a great opportunity to be introspective. So there's this dynamic that happens with the visitor. If we're truly in reciprocal relationship that we learn from the visitor, if nothing else indirectly, to, um, to, to recollect ourselves and who we are and what, uh, what, what, what is the uniqueness of our community that we're really offering, not just another hotel. So um, yeah, yeah, I want to, because the word regeneration is almost a synonym now for sustainability. We just do it, right? We get the checklist and, and that's not what regeneration is about. Regeneration is about reflection and reconsideration and then rebirthing a new relationship. And let's say that we do that every year. New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, whatever day you choose to make New Year's, should be a celebration of what we've learned this past year, how we adjust, how we go forward. And then there's a rebirth of now what do we need to focus on because life continually changes. And that's the use, the, the, the um, effective, that's the effective use of the term regeneration is to make us conscious of uh, reflection. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll stop there. No, I think it's really important. And what Michelle was sharing as well is absolutely true. In Hawaii now, we do see a time of really transformation, one that all of us have been asking and promoting, but that I believe people are finally listening to. And And I remember when the mayor of Maui was giving a speech at uh, actually community of practice meeting with Hawaii Green Growth, and he did say, we are not Disneyland. You are not here just to have the time of your life. You're here to actually contribute. And we're connected together because of this time and place. And that really is an important point. When we look, it's necessary to change the nature of travel. And it must become a force for good. And regenerative rest and leisure does foster collaboration and synergy among all the, all the key stakeholders in our world today. And a living, thriving planet operates through a global network of local phenomena, as you were sharing, Bill. And for this reason, the work of regenerating the world's natural systems can only succeed in particular places using approaches that are creating response to unique processes of life in those places that both of you are talking about. Michelle, can you share a bit about the future of regenerative tourism? Hmm, the future. Hmm. Or potential paths, preferred yeah. Route that you would like to, yeah. to, to engage and to go down that road as we move forward. Sure. I'm thinking about a quote that I saw, I read this morning from an article about um, New Zealand, a particular region, um, Lake Wanaka and, and Queenstown um, region, and how they have brought community together to reimagine how they host each other, how they're hosted by the land, how they host visitors. And, and they, the article talked about one tourism operator that now refers to itself as a conservation organization powered by tourism. <laughs> I, I, I like that. There's something, it's another way of saying we are a force for healing and our means, our method, or even our excuse in some ways it can be tourism, can be hosting. So if all of us would somehow see ourselves in that way, in, in this paper that Bill and I wrote, we say something like, um, the, the times are so dire that we need every sector to put down their tools, turn to the world and say, these are our skills and resources. How can we help? So I, what I'd love to see in the future is, is for that conversation to happen and for it, the, the answer to be really embraced, whatever that answer is in the community, that every host, every organization that's focused on tourism 
sees itself as a regenerative organization powered by tourism. The, the conversation shifts really fundamentally everywhere and in every community. I think it's a, a broad <laughs> answer, but something along those lines. No, oh, that's great. And I remember going to Wanaka as well as uh, Wanganui, where they actually gave the river the rights of a yes. person. And so Aotearoa, I think, is a great example. And working with the Maori people as well as the Aboriginals and Torres Strait Islanders there, absolutely crucial as we go forward. So I definitely think there are indicators, right? There are guides that we see the best practices of where we can head. Bill, would you like to share a bit about the future? Yeah, I'll just say that yeah, what we're leading to, let's really cut to the chase. The world is in, the world is in bad shape and it's causing a lot of angst and anxiety. What regeneration offers is not just the hope that we can begin to reverse that. Maybe, maybe not. But what it demands of us is to think more deeply about what this life is all about. And it's a generosity of spirit that's required. Um, that really what we're birthing is love. So I think that if we understand that the only way we're going to take care of this planet is if we take care of each other, ourselves, each other, and the living, the places that we're part of, and that's an act of love. And if we can actually see it through that lens, um, maybe it would check us and actually find out, well, that's really what's important. I'll, I'll think that's enough. No, I think those are really good points because it's about listening, it's about learning, and then leading with the skill set that each of us have to help improve and mm -hmm. add to that place that we're visiting, I would say. And when we look at it, Article 24 really does guarantee regenerative rest and leisure for all with even periodic holidays, with pay. And it shows that all must grow as human beings for a better way together for our world on a regenerative journey. And it's definitely necessary to transfer tourism for the future of Maui and Hawaii. As Archie Kalepa was saying, a master navigator, he said, really, January 20th is a day that we're going to invite the world to Maui. And Lahaina is a vaha, is a canoe. And right now, we're, we haven't decided who the captain's going to be, who the crew will be. But it's inviting everyone to come, to talk, to share, to decide on the direction not only of Lahaina, and Maui, but of Hawaii's future, that in a way, there's a decolonization, there's a decorporatization, there's a decarbonization, there's a decentralization, there's a deciding what we want in a way, democratizing our energy systems, our mm -hmm. uh, economy, really combining economy, ecology, equality, and equity to all lead for the same directions going forward. So I thank you both for coming and sharing your manao, your wisdom, and look forward to continue this conversation as we go forward for the future of Maui as well as Hawaii. And we really do appreciate your contribution and the work that you do and know that it can provide a very positive space to secure an alternative future that we all desire in this world. Mahalo nui. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you.